Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome back. You're here with Apostle George Dixon, a.k.a. New Rev in the house, bringing you word and power through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we have an excellent lineup for you. We're going to pick it back on last week's segment a little bit, and we're going to take it forward with, un well, not unforgiving, but dealing with forgiveness. That's a big thing in the body of Christ. We're still talking about deliverance, and one of the things you must realize is that you cannot love until you learn how to deal with forgiveness. Unforgiveness will keep you from a lot of things that God has in store for you. And a lot of people will, you know, they, they don't even recognize they're walking in unforgiveness until something triggers. Amen? I, how do I know that? I've been saved for so many years, and uh, probably at the time this happened, it was probably about running around, probably about my ninth year in Christ, and uh, a man of God that came to, to the, uh, the house of God, where I was at at the time, and in his clothes, he said he felt a spirit in the atmosphere. I'm, I'm going to hold that, thought for, hold that thought for a minute, but let me go back to, to forgiveness. Forgiveness has to take place because God is love. And you can't love and be the reflection of God, come on, operating in unforgiveness. Therefore, you have not loved. I want to throw uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 out there for some of you that may not understand what, why love is so important and, and why we have to operate love. Go and, and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and you'll find all about this thing called love. The, the word charity in uh, the King James Version is uh, all over that chapter. But when you break that word charity down, it means love. Go study that. But going back to my situation where I began to find out that I was operating in a, in a, in a case of unforgiveness. And once I, I, I you know, I, I rec recognized it was still in me, and I recognized, you know, I had to address the situation. Once I uh, addressed it, and once I identified the spirit that was operating inside of me, and I went back and got some things right, things broke in my life. I got set free. So what was that thing? You know, as a child, and I'm saying it because there's a lot of people that are out there that have gone through this on different levels. Come on, I'm being real here. You, you may have been molested by somebody in your family. You may have been molested as a child by a, a close friend. Come on. And you never really dealt with that as, as you have come into the kingdom. But every time you may hear that name or, or see that person, there's something on the inside of you that just tense up. That's something on the inside of you that tense up is unforgiveness. That's right. Unforgiveness. So I had to get that thing right. And then once I got it right, I told my mother about it because I kept it hid from her. And now, you know, I'm really free. And now she knows the real deal. So I don't know how things may be working for you guys out there, but you got to understand, if you hate your brother's cousin, this, that, and the third, who you can see, the Word of God said, how can you huh, love God or believe in God whom you have not seen? I'll paraphrase, I know that. But let's go ahead and get to the scripture. But before we go all the way into forgiveness, I want you to understand, we got to go back a little bit from last week and deal with those five categories. I said maybe about two segments, uh, but I, I think we're going to go ahead and address those five categories. Why? Because you've got to understand what you're fighting, who you're fighting with, and where to place, the category, place them in what category. Let me rephrase it. Once you understand what you're dealing with, you've got to know what category of demon you're dealing with. How about that? And once you know that, then you'll know how to fight. Come on, somebody. And last time we talked, we talked about the five demons being celestial, aerial, aquatic, and terrestrial, as well as subterranean. And I said I was going to give you definition. Give, oh, I'm going to give you quick definition. Hopefully you studied like I asked. But quick definition of celestial. We're talking about the spirits that's, uh, now, now celestial and, and Ariel, you got to know the difference because it seems like they're both saying the same thing. But really, you're talking about those that those things are in the air that's heavenly. Amen? That's heavenly. Otherwise, what you mean heavenly demons? Come on. I'm not talking about the heaven that our God said. Come on. But let's think about it. In the book of Job, the Bible declared that the son of, the son of God, God came before God and along with them was who? Oh, Lucifer. Now, you tell me. Oh, Lucifer was up there doing what? Bringing accusation. So don't tell me there's not demons in the, in the celestial. Then you're talking about Ariel, which really means demons of the air. Okay? 
So you got you got the celestial that almost looks like the air with the area almost looking like the celestial, but there's limits as far as they can go. Okay? Then you got the aquatic demons. Those are demons that I keep aquatic, aquatic demons. They're the ones that what? They deal in the water. Well, I thought the Holy Ghost was in is of water. Well, let me share something with you. Everything that's of God, Satan kingdom wants to do two things. They wants to pervert it. And make the second thing they want to become so powerful that it looks like it's their own. That's why I got Satan kicked out of heaven in the first place. Wanting to be God and want to take over. So he's going to mimic everything that's in the kingdom of God. He wants to try to mimic it for the kingdom of heaven. So yes, there are there's demons that fight you in the water. There are there's demons that fight you in the air. There are demons that fight you in the heavens. Come on somebody. And then the next one we want to talk about, one of the fine was uh, the, the, the terrestrial demon. That's the demons of this earth. Huh? They're on the ground floor. It's just like being in the military. You got what? You got aviation. Come on. You got uh, 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 um, you got the Navy. Come on. In other words, you got the Air Force. You got the Navy. You feel what I'm saying? But then in the Army, you got the ground troops. Are you feeling me? You got your ground troops. The one that gets me the most is the subterranean ones. Huh? What do you mean? Subterranean. Those are the ones that's beneath the earth. Subterranean demons. Come on. You got the what? You got the heavenlies. You got the 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 air, uh, the air force. Come on, somebody, follow me. Other way, the ones up there. And then you got the ones that's what of of the ground. Come on. I'm, I'm making to make a point. I know my eyes about it because I've got to deal with about something just right now. And then you got the ones that's of this earth. The ones that works under the earth. That's subterranean. Okay. The underground structure is below the ground. So what do you mean? You got things that's coming at you from all forces. Think about this. Put him where? Under your what? Feet. Where's that at? On the ground, under the ground. Where's he going to go? Where's the holy place? Where's hell? Come on. You got demons that are, that are locked up right now. Angels that are locked up right now. Okay? So you got to know what category of, 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 of the demonic forces that you're working with. How it's coming? And, I mean, not. Let me rephrase that. You got to know what demon you're working with, and then you have to place him in the right category, and then you'll be able to deal with that that Joker. Why? Because if you're trying to find an aerial demon dealing with with, with a terrestrial type tactic, you might not win. Amen. If you want to be effective, know your enemy. When I was in the military, the first thing they taught us, for after after stripping us of, of our identity, the first thing they taught us how to recognize our enemy. And you recognize the enemy by the symbol or their emblems. Huh? You can recognize your enemy by the way they act. Okay. Is that for special forces? Well, we'll get there as well then. Amen? But I just wanted to hit that right quick. But we're going to jump on over. If anybody have any questions, let me go. I haven't done this in any of my other segments. If you have any other questions, you can hit me up. Now, I might get in a little trouble for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, we, we want to hit you up by giving you my email. And we're going to check, in um, uh, other words, I'm going to have some emails set up just for the show, but I haven't done that just yet. But for those that may have questions on this particular situation, you, I, I'm giving you my personal email that you may email me, and that's at G. Dixon Jr., amen, G. Dixon Jr., that's G-D-I-X-O-N-J-R, at what? At gmail.com, just that simple. That's my pers one of my personal emails. Send me a questionnaire. If you have a, I won't say all right, but if you have something else you want to discuss with that, send it on over. But while you're doing that, I want you to go ahead and put your fingers in Matthew's the sixth chapter, because we want to deal with this thing about forgiveness. Amen. The sixth chapter, Matthew, verses what, twelve through fifteen. Yeah, I got some notes today. They're not cheat sheets. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything in this particular subject matter. Matthew's the sixth chapter, verses twelve through. 15. Amen. And uh, some of the preachers out there always say, and this is a very familiar passage of scripture. That scares me. I understand what they're saying, but you know, if I'm so familiar with the scripture, why is it every time I read the scripture, the same old scripture, I get another revelation out of it? I guess I'm not so familiar with it. Amen. So if we pick up our Bibles and we read Matthew 6 chapter, it says, starting at what? The 12th verse. And somebody said, what, what verse? Starting at the 12th verse. It states, it says like this, it states, and forgive us our what? Debts. As we forgive our debtors. Break it down. 
debts. It ain't what you think. You talk about unforgiveness. If you got, if, if you, if somebody got something against you, and you can't forgive them for what they're doing for, you, did against you, amen. Well, then why should God forgive you? That's a good question. But we want to be forgiven. We want to put ourselves squeaky clean before God. But God said there's some things in your heart that you got that you have hidden, that you got hatred. And see, when you when you operate in just that little, little bit, you let the legal you give the enemy a legalistic right to continue to operate in your life. That creates what is called a stronghold. So forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You gotta forgive them. If you hold a grudge against mom and daddy because they didn't do right as far as you're concerned, or if you got mom and daddy that, that broke up, had a divorce, that had nothing to do with you. You forgive them for what they did. That between them. You don't have to give an account for that. But you need to get over it because it, it gives your enemy a, a legalistic right to operate in your life. And you don't want to give that slew for the rocks because no ground. Come on. So verse number 13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you're operating in, in unforgiveness, you're being tempted in other areas. Because if you can, if you can have an art against your brother and you don't go to him, then other things are going to come in. How do I know that? The scripture says that, of, of course, listen to me loud and clear. It says that, that when we uh, clean our temples, come on, I'm paraphrasing all that. I want everybody to get it. If there's kids that I want you to get it. If you clean out your temple and that demon went out, then he come back, find your temple clean, guess what? He go back and get seven more demons seven times. That's going to make it seven times worse. And you're going to be worse off, the, worse off than what you were the first time. And what that really indicates is that you went through something called conviction. You got conviction and you came into the kingdom of God, but you never went through true conversion. True conversion will have you sweep in your house. True conversion will have you making sure that you're in line with the word of God and that your temple stay clean because you want the Holy Ghost to come in. There's a lot of Christians get convicted and do the right thing, but they never go in all the way. Why? Because they always what? Get, can go back and pick up that old man. So you got to operate in, um, I mean, in forgiveness and get rid of unforgiveness. You cannot love until you get rid of unforgiveness. You have to forgive them that come against you. And then the next thing is you have to watch out because as soon as you, you don't operate in unforgiveness, then you're tempted to do something else. Come on. You get caught up in the system of the kingdom of hell. It's a, they are, the, the kingdom of hell processes you just like you get processed through the kingdom of heaven. Amen? You have to work out your own soul salvation. But getting on with the point, verse 14 says, For if we forgive... Let me say it again. For if ye, you, forgive not men their transgression, neither will your, your, uh, come on, Holy Ghost, your Father forgive you of your trespasses. Moreover, uh, 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 I don't want to take it too fast. The point is, you read the rest of that. But the thing is, if you want to be forgiven, you got to forgive. Therefore, you can get that demon out of you. That spirit of hatred. That bitterness, that strife out of you. Come on, somebody. There are three things that come with, with uh, uh, not being able to forgive somebody. Three things you got to keep in mind. You got temptation, you got evil, and you got twice. I'm holding my paper because I'm, I'm reading real fast. You got trespasses. Watch this. Temptation is, is a driving spirit. Evil is all manner of spirit. And then when you have trespasses, it's, 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 it says, I mean, I wrote, made a note. It says, ah. It's our recklessness. I had to get my, my thoughts together there. It's our recklessness of will, willfully disobeying. Amen? So you got to get all that stuff out of you so that, that forgiveness can come in place and unforgiveness can strive in your life. I mean, I kind of rushed through that, but the bottom line is if you are walking around in unforgiveness and you can't forgive the next man, you walk around in error and you can't be blessed the way God wants you to bless. He's trying to get us all to a place to be blessed and he's trying to open up our eyes and then we avail ourselves to his will and his way, then guess what? You shall be uh, uh, taken care of. Forgiveness will come into place. But I just want to take the time to say again, I thank everybody that will tune in and that has tuned in today. And uh, I hope everyone will receive word and power. And remember, until next week, 
if you take the time to study it, if you can believe what I've, I've said, and if you can study for yourself and believe it, then receive what God has said for you today. He wants us to be delivered. Unforgiveness is not you. Forgiveness is. In Jesus' name, amen.